Hello and welcome to this week's Photography Pubcast. And what can I say? We're down again. Another sick note. Eh, he rang in sick. What can I say? I'll not tell you yet. You'll see in a minute. And he and he's the man with the Morpheus chair. So we're all a bit we're all a bit lost. We were lost last week with James Rudderless, left in the fells, in the mist, in the fog of time. And this week, we're left again. We sick note. What do we it's think? Been the, it's been in the pub all day. We've had to take him home and put him to bed. That's it. That's the one. That's what's up with him. <laughs> He's going to be missed. He's going to be missed like James was last week. He's going to be missed. Yeah. Fanny. I don't know. I watched that episode last week. It's an really enjoyable to talk about him, of course. Hang on a minute. James was just saying he really enjoyed the episode last I week. did. It's really funny. Really? <laughs> really funny. I'm not sure about the top. It's a real more one. I, I'm, I'm glad in a way that Darren's not here because. What on earth was he talking about? You walk in through a nice woods, it's beautiful ambience, getting all the greens and beautiful stuff. And then there's a big dollop of doggy fodder on the floor, and he's telling me that it's promoting people walking in it. Unbelievable, disgusting, lazy bastards. Do you know? Hate it. I absolutely hate it. I thought tonight we, we won't mention about too late. <laughs> Who on earth he wants to get straight. home and scrape doggy poo from the grips? I thought, am I real? Has he lost it? Has he lost the plot? Or what? <laughs> what can I say? I think it was more the fact of him watching other people scrape it than him scraping it himself. Yeah. Oh, by the way, by the way, it should really mention that we had. We need to talk about comments. Actually, we need to talk about comments on yeah. the vlog because. We we do well. I certainly do, and I'm pretty sure everyone else does. We read all the comments. We've been a bit, a bit maybe lazy. That's the days yeah, of kind of replying yeah. lately, but we do read all the comments, and we do genuinely appreciate them from every single person who comments. And there was one person who commented. Uh, let me find it on here. Kathleen, I think her name was Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen Hickey. Uh, she's from the US, and she doesn't know what Room One Hundred One is. So. Poor girl, she must have sat through like God knows how long of this episode going. I have no idea what they're on about. Room 101 is or was a TV show, and it's like a what is it like a virtual room where you just put all the things that you hate and they go down into room 101. Isn't is it, it a jo- George, George Orwell, Orwell thing? Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Is it 1984? Mm-hmm. From the film, yeah. Yes, it's a reference to the room in which the Ministry tortured people based on their worst fears. Yeah, that's room right. 101. A happy film yeah. that was. Yeah, or, or or a TV show. We're not. We're not. I'm not saying Sorry. we're going that way, but not as good as Animal Farm. Oh, well, that's another Actually, video. Actually, can I can I just I would just King like Pratt. to take this opportunity if Kathleen is bothered to watch again. Um, hi, <laughs> no, seriously, I'm going to say it. Hi, Kathleen. She's lovely. She comments on my stuff, and we have some nice conversations. She lives in a lovely part of the world, by the way. Um, I Ooh. think, if I'm right in remembering, Colorado Springs, right Ooh. underneath the Rockies. And her her Ooh. Instagram's quite interesting. So, well done, Kathleen, and thanks for watching. Thank you very much, Kathleen. And I bet you're familiar with the Osric Tentacles as well, because they have a studio out there. Not saying Colorado's a small place, but... If you like your music, go, go and check out the Osric Tentacles. So this week's comment from Kathleen will be, love the podcast, who the hell are the Osric Tentacles? <laughs> yeah. Same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that where Man and Joanna is legal as well? It is, yes. I'm moving there shortly. I'm going to say. Kathleen, we're all coming <laughs> over, love. Get the spur room ready. <laughs> they've got mountains, they've got marijuana, what else do you need? So, so James, you didn't get your chance to put anything in room 101 last week, did you? Sorry, you've no, got a mouth of no. a biscuit now, haven't you? What biscuit have you got in your mouth? So we need Chocolate to do the Chocolate digestives. Sorry, oh, chaps, but I've right. just had my tea and this is my pudding. I've got uh, a bit of a sweet too. Do you, do you want us to come back complete. to you in a bit once you've had your dessert? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah well, just yeah. talk amongst yourself. <laughs> oh, well, well, while we're here then, let's just say as well in the comments that Mark Taylor said that super excited that he's some, is something he would love to go straight into room 101. When people go, I'm super excited to be here. That I mean, that is pretty annoying, isn't it? In that's what you all hit. Well, awesome. mine was mine was awesome. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Amongst awesome other things. Adventures. Amongst other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, adventure I, for me. I should have said <laughs> canon. It would have been topical now, wouldn't it? Would have been. 
would have been. Mm. Has something cribbed. happened? Yeah. Has what? Has something happened then? I said wet. I said pants. I should have said can. Oh, no, no, oh, no, so, oh no, something's that. Yeah, it? yeah, something. I don't know what. There was a lot of um, hype. There was a lot of noise on YouTube. Loads oh. of people desperately trying to be the first person to put a video out. There's about twenty in the now. <laughs> I've seen. I've seen. I, I don't know anything about the R5 or the R6 at all, but I have seen that it makes a fantastic video of people pouring coffee. Oh, coffee beans, yeah. Peter McKinnon did an amazing video of yeah. coffee, a coffee being made on an R6. So, if yeah. that doesn't if that doesn't make you want to buy it, That's then sold. I don't know what does. <sighs> that Do would you know be room one hundred one for me. I feel like making a cardboard version and lying on uh, the beach at New Brighton, just stroking. What's up, YouTubers? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it, let's try it, let's all try it. I'm not doing Podcast that. listeners, you need to what do we say about watch respect? this as well. And respect, respect, respect. Brilliant. Oh, that's, that's dumb, man. But there's on, about David. 11 to million people that like that sort of thing, by all accounts. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. very popular. Yep. So What's up? Just, yeah. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, a, it's very it's, it's, it's a popular he's a very popular brand and fair play to him he's a very good videographer actually yeah, I, I, I yeah. like the one yeah. it's alright I like his sidekick Matty Matty's good lad isn't he I ain't got a clue you're talking about I don't watch him Matty speaking speaking and meeting him to be Happy, 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 happier. Is it Matty happier? Matty happy, Have you not been to Colorado? Never been to the pub. Come on, Mally, you're doing a terrible job of comparing. It's all, it's all fallen to bits already. Can we have some order, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, then, James. You've had your biscuit. What was your one hundred one? Come on. Well, funnily enough, it's still related to turds. God no. See, I'm 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 a I'm a, a quite a keen gardener, right? There's nothing worse than a, you're just doing your turn your bed over nicely. Cat shit, cat shit. Cat so I go shit. running out, <laughs> and he's there, that nonchalant little. Like that. <laughs> Is that not down. good for the plants, though? Is that not good for the plants? No, it's That's toxic. It's cat. actually. But it's actually poisonous if you get it in your eye and not eat it, which you're not going to do. Again. It's Try not to then. How, do, how does it it's go again? It's just disgusting. It's just not, you don't go. Oh my god, a cat shit in my garden! Quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess I get the fuck out and t- t- oh. it's just disgusting. It's good for the complexion. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how you might not be able to see much after that. <laughs> Completely blind, Paula. Again, yes, it can. Like yeah, it can. I can't. I can't remember what the. Uh, there's a <laughs> to- name. To- uh, taxi. To- taxi dermis. That's what I want to do. With <laughs> taxi for dermis. Taxi for burns. I've got a thing against cats, haven't I? Is it seven ways to skin a cat? Something plasmosis. Yeah, something like that. Toxoplasmosis or something. Shit it out. Dear, oh, dear. Little, I hate him. The first week Darren's not here. It's it's just going all over the place. Oh my god, he'd love this conversation, though, wouldn't he? But yeah, I'm, I'm with you for cats. I hate cats. Oh, they're disgusting <gasps> animals. I'm allergic to them. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry for cat lovers, but they just... Ugh. Yeah. I hate them. They're just... There's, there's 50 ugh. subs. Horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat <laughs> shit. I'm with, 100% with you on the cat shit in the garden. We've got a neighbour that the cat comes over the fence and there's on the patio yeah. every yeah. morning when you get up. Go on your own bloody garden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More, yeah. Pigeons. Pigeons more than cats. Pigeons. <laughs> See, you think a cat's doing a big shit. Have you, uh, the pigeons round here, it's like they're dropping a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm, not yeah. being, I'm not being funny. I was driving along and a pigeon, I think it was a pigeon shot on my car and I thought I'd been shot on by Drogon at a Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, I literally, I, I, had to, I had to pull over. I had to pull over and put the windscreen wipers on full oh. like monsoon. Oh, I didn't oh, 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 yeah, oh. shocking. Bevel dash. It's, oh. it's, 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 it's worse in the autumn when the red currants and the red berries are about because then it's complete yeah. red splat yeah. on the windscreen, isn't yeah. it? Blackberry shit. Yeah. yeah. We're on shit again. We're going to have to change the name to the photography shit cast, aren't we? 
Well, it has been from the beginning, really, but people are still tuning in, so we're still going. Very true. What are you drinking, James? What are you drinking, Cocker? Coffee. 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 What are we on, uh, Jamie? Just quick, quick Just round normal. up. Go ship. Yeah, it's because it's, it's got citrus in it, so it helps. Ooh. You see, it's one of it's been one of the uh, one, one of your day. five a day. Yeah, five, yeah, yeah. One of your five a day. That's the one. Yeah. Um, come on, Gary. What are we on? What are we on? Uh, I'm on Corona again. I got this was payment cool. actually for work done. I did a little video for somebody, and they paid me with four Coronas. That's that'll do. Not six. Tight bastards. No, just four. Not, yeah, sister in law. Sister in law, what are you gonna say? No. Oh, sorry, yeah. sister. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. You're not tight really. <laughs> it's all right, they don't you could have got him sick. You're safe, they don't watch. <laughs> Dave, moose, on uh, the poos, a loose in the Gudrad or Guru Moose Poos. Oh, he's good. I like oh says some more. Did you guys see the picture that Dave posted by the way? Yeah, I don't know how your yeah. fireplace coats mantelpiece, the weight, yeah. mate. Tell you. He had he had a he had a picture of his entire mantelpiece above his fire. Full of moose poos. How's it yeah. looking now, Dave? Yeah. There's two uh, missing. <laughs> Only two. Yeah, we have been reserved. Christ. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, and uh, on with the poop. I mean the show. Oh, strongbow, Mally. Drink your strongbow. Good one. Yeah. <sighs> Keeps me young. Yeah. So, what are we talking about then, Mally? Bring it, bring it round. Let's. Uh, well, apart from being embalmed in strongbow, I think we need to. Uh, just have a talk about the idea of say, uh, do, do I go there? Where, do where I, are you going? Do I, do you're going to go, go anywhere. So well, well, I am, aren't I? Well, this week I've been editing my images from Ennerdale that ended up at Wasswater, so I may as well just call it, I don't know, because I was at Ennerdale and it was that busy. And we went to Ennerdale. So let's just Ennerdale quickly just... Busy. Let me just explain to you. We'll go to Ennerdale. There'll be no one there. This is back couple of weeks three four weeks ago when we was thinking should we be here should we go to the lakes there's going to be people are we going to get pitchforked anyway we went to Emdale thinking there'd be no one there car park was full shocking it was there was people everywhere now the reservoir was very low so I did my video blah 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 then we ended up at Wasswater and I thought right there's no one there and and it was lovely but the images when I came back for the go with the vlog and my photography Let's uh, I've done a little bit of Photoshop work and all I can say to you is when you look at them, please just be kind because dishonesty in photography, is it? I'll be honest. Is it everywhere? Are we all dishonest? Just clicking and taking the picture, the digital camera, is that dishonest? I don't know. But what I'm trying to get at is, is there is a certain like kind of idea of dishonesty in photography you mean composites no it's not even a Putting composite Ennardale with mass water is that what you mean I, 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 I could have done at one point but I didn't I'll, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the shot quick and then you you might you might have a look when I've done it I did some silver birch of course I did Jamie cool uh, of course you did about five or six silver birch in a portrait orientation cropped in a little bit and I've played with the autumn effect Nothing wrong with that. Now, I've done the Orton effect before, but not in the way I've done this time. I normally do the Orton effect in Lightroom. And if you want to know, you can always come on an online workshop and I'll show you how. But on this occasion, <laughs> I've done the Orton effect. Hang on a minute. I got an old earache <laughs> for doing that sort of thing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've done the Orton effect in, in Photoshop and, it, and I've really gone to town on it. And we're just all going to have a chat, I think, about dishonesty in photography. You know, not being genuine. So I'm telling people, and I will let people know that I've done this with this image, X and Y, Z, the rest. But there's some people, they don't tell people, and, and they do things, and they send people things, and they're not exactly truthful about where they've got it from and how they've got it. Are you suggesting the that photograph. people might people might think that looking at a photograph with the autumn effect, it's natural just coming out of the camera. Yeah. if they do but, that, but they're a bit short, aren't they? They're just a bit short of something. Well, if, 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 well no, if, no, if you're not really. Of, if you're in the middle of a nuclear winter, or you there know, there's, there's literally just been Purple a nuclear skies. explosion, then they might consider it to be realistic, yeah. I don't think there's Is, anything wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, personally, like, in terms of, if you want to, if you want to, you know, 
use the autumn effect or if you want to put in say you want to take out something that wasn't there or, or that was there so you want to take out like clone something out of photoshop or you want to add a little bit of maybe intentional camera movement after the effect or you want to soften something down or you want to you know slightly you know split tone it to a different color that's all could be classed as cheating but i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that where i draw the line i think is probably when you start getting to the luminar stage of things where you're replacing skies or mm. you're putting you're putting composites. things in that weren't there yeah, yeah mm. composites yeah mm. but real composites like gary goff does composites for instance and he will he'll say that he'll take a picture of i don't know whatever it is and it, he'll put in a, a long exposed piece of water by the coast but but a short exposed sky and I don't really have an issue with that if they're from the same day and like so they're taken maybe five minutes apart and he's gone thirty seconds on the on the on the sea and and one one sixtieth on the sky and he puts them together fair enough, but if you're doing thirty seconds on the on the sea from I don't know Blackpool and then you're pulling in the sky from Western Australia, then that's where the issue is for me when it's a real you know it, it's when it becomes perceived to be potentially deceitful isn't it when you're trying to deceive somebody into creating an image that isn't really what was there on the time so i don't have an issue with using photoshop to to create your own art because that's what it is it's a it's an art creation tool um and if somebody's going to have a composite then that's fine if they claim that it's a composite and come out to say like it's a composite image it is what it is i've created it. it's my art what do you think to it i like it you might not but I think if somebody tries to create something for the sake of trying to just deceive somebody to make it look better than it actually is, maybe that's slightly, you know, over the line, really. I think it just, yeah. you know, and get the Orton effect. I haven't got an issue with that. I use the Orton effect. I think you need to be very careful with the Orton effect uh, in terms of your percentages, Mally. But uh, I think, uh, you know, <laughs> but I think it's, it's, I it's a tool to be used just to create a little bit of atmosphere, really. And certainly in woodland and stuff, I think it works exceptionally well in woodland images, really. I remember mm. rightly there was a there was a big hoo ha on Twitter, and, and James, you might have you might have seen this. I don't know because you're quite heavy on Twitter. About a year ago, someone who was uh, I can't remember, I don't know who it was, but they had a book out about photographing Dorset and the Jurassic Coast. And one of the images they used to promote it was the Northern Lights over Dirtle Door. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember right. that? Do you remember that? I don't know if you remember that. And someone I said, "I don't well, remember that." But that's no, how can quite you? Dirtle Door, the way you're facing is is south or or the very very most east. You know, you're not facing north, and you're not far up enough really to get the Northern Lights anyway. But yeah, and then I think there was a Milky Way shot of somewhere as well where the Milky Way couldn't possibly have been there. And I think if you yeah. put down and say this is a composite, you know, it's a it's a fantasy image almost, then that's okay. Mm. But if you're trying to sell that as the Northern Lights actually happen over Girdle Door, you. But I think mm. I think the thing about it is though is, and we've all kind of said it, but in different ways, is it's the not the level of, but whether there is any overt deception, because. Yeah. For example, there's there's a story doing the rounds as recently as this week on Petapixel where a chap got, allegedly, a photograph of a tornado which was an epic image and immediately people cried composite because he was virtually standing inside the tornado to get the shot. Now, the story highlights other images from the same photographer that says, oh, look, he's used exactly the same storm clouds for these other composites. Actually, when you look at them, even not even particularly carefully, it doesn't, you know, anybody that's experienced it looking at images will go, no, they're not the same. But yeah. the story concludes with um, the photographer is, is saying nothing. He's not responding at all to the, the flurry of trolls that are claiming that it's a composite all he's saying is here's a picture in fact he's not even Good. saying it he's posted it make draw your own conclusions yeah and i think yeah. that in the event he came out and said oh yeah there i was in kansas and you know i had my red shoes on i got carried away by this <laughs> tornado <laughs> and and you know everybody says well hang on a minute that tornado was actually in oklahoma three years ago then clearly there's an issue but he said nothing he just yeah. created an image and posted it and walked away. Just, I'll just leave that there. 
and then I'll let you lot have a big debate about it because I couldn't care less. Uh, I've created images which have had significant slices of artistic license involved in them. What I haven't done is claimed that they didn't. And yeah. people have debated those images at some length and I've just let them do it because I don't care what they think. I'm not prepared to get involved in a discussion about the rights and wrongs of it. As mm. Jamie quite rightly pointed out, it's art and who's to say? Would you say it's fine art? Oh, shut up. <laughs> What's fine <laughs> art, Marley? Just define fine art. What? It's being creative, isn't it? It's taking an image beyond what you first saw and making it something that you It's basically you a, a vision, whatever vision you want to create. The vision, the creative. So, yeah. Yeah. I kind of thought fine art was just better than like meh art. <laughs> Bad ass. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just okay than piss yeah. poor art. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's average yeah. art. Yeah. Piss yeah. artist. You've got like you've got like piss poor art, meh art, and yeah, fine art. Yeah. <laughs> come on, James. James, come on. What? Have you ever added any more atmosphere, mood? Have you ever gone into an image? Never. Come on. I know. See, I know. At the end of the day, and I think it's, it's been said already. I think dishonesty comes in if you're really promoting something which isn't a location, blah blah blah. But in the day, it's aesthetics. It's it's the art, isn't it? And they, if you choose to do composites for the old effect, and so be, and it looks good, so be. For me, though, the old a massive proportion of why I enjoy photography is being at that location and enjoying what's in front of me. And if yeah. I'm going to use composites and bring in other skies in from other parts of the country, I'm deceiting myself, not anyone else. But I'm, I'm do you know what I mean? It, it just seems wrong for me. Yeah, I've yeah. never Why been interested it? whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Why do it with a camera? You could do it with a pencil and a piece of paper. You know exactly. what? What? Why? Yeah. It is good. I think if you're in a like lockdown, like we have been, it, it is an interesting thing to do. Maybe to experiment with three or four images and put together a fantasy and to be honest I, I used to do that when I first learned in Photoshop I'm sure we've all done it yeah. haven't we mm. Mm. yeah see mm. I was a massive fan of Tim White and Rodney Matthews and Rodney Matthews used to make the Yes uh, album covers uh, very much like Avatar worlds with hanging hanging islands in the sky and yeah. and, and the very blown out uh, blue skies with fantastical you know, dragon type worlds, and I, I I spent a long time really enjoying that kind of artwork. But all that was done with pencil and and paint and mm. gouache, and just created from the mind. And it's so. great for the imagination. It's if you want to escape somewhere, mm. and that's in your imagination. That's that you know that's what. It but with photography, yeah. it really gets the dragons back up, doesn't it? Mm. You know. I guess the mm. thing is, though, if you if you just if you're doing it for the art it doesn't matter what you're doing you know I was saying about replacing skies if you're doing it for yourself it doesn't matter if you replace the sky from Blackpool with the sky from southern Australia for instance but it's when you're trying to like I know there was a um, an instance a little while back of someone who posted or who would actually had a published image in National Geographic of the the uh, tutor uh, no it was the uh, it was the arch of uh, uh, the Milky Way arch over a tree I think it was in somewhere in Africa possibly and they got pulled up because they got spotted that the same they'd done uh, uh, cloning uh, const- and the yes. same little bits were showing up again and again and they got yeah. pulled up and, and National Geographic you know one of the stipulations is that you you don't you don't you know clone you don't you don't show images that don't reflect what's truly going on or, or the um, <laughs> The winner of what was it a couple of years ago was it wildlife photographer of the year that had the, the taxidermy the dead animal is it <laughs> did anyone know that it was it was actually yeah. oh yeah, no yeah, country just, file no no no, no. File. It, was, it was actually like international something like that, international wildlife photographer of the year and it was some i can't remember what the animal was it's something like a I don't know. Gerbil. No, it's like a. Do you know? I don't know what the animal was, but it was dead. Cat. It was dead. It was a dead, a dead, dead cat. cat. No, it was actually a dead animal. A stuffed dead animal Parrot. that they'd taken a photo Parrot. of. Parrot. The thing is, you'd, you'd, you'd think real. the tire track across the middle would be a giveaway, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting though because there's there's a raging debate around camera clubs because where you when you're in a camera club and you enter competitions and then you get into regionals and nationals and all that sort of thing. Composites are allowed in quite a number of different categories, as long as you 
admit that it's or not admit but up front you say look here's my composite and a lot of standard inverted commas photographers complain bitterly that oh well we never win anything and if you look at things like the London Salon and some of the you know national competitions that go on under the RPS it's heavily weighted towards composites they're obvious composites but they're nevertheless they're the ones that are winning the competitions and yet they're in the same class of competition as people who you know go out and as Gary said earlier you know 60th of a second click there's my image bit of post processing and 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 yet they they you know they're kind of on a hiding to nothing and it's understandable that they'd be slightly miffed that they're being judged in the same category it's like saying okay well we'll put a go kart out against a formula 1 car guess who's going to win so mm -hmm. Uh, but it always struck me that um, where people were doing composites, by and large, they're very clever. The ones that win are jaw-droppingly interesting images. Obviously mm. composites, they're fantasy images. They're like the cover of Lord of the Rings book or mm. something like that. But, you know, some of the stuff you see is really good. Um, and and it, it just strikes me that it, it, it just should have its own categorization. Uh, but nobody's nobody's denying that it's composites that are being entered into these competitions. When it's I interesting. Oh, go on, go on, mate. No, I was going to say it's interesting that if you think of it like Mally in our world, you're you're creative. I'm print, and you you engage you you employ a photographer to take the image, and then he gives you his images that goes into the agency, and the creative director then takes that into Photoshop or whatever they use, and then manipulates the image to take something that's going to go into print. And yep. it's as though the photographer in this, what we're talking about here, is doing two roles. He's doing the photographer role and he's doing the creative direction role and he's merging them both together. So he's taking his image and then creating some art from his images. So that's that's really what we're talking about. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but it, it is a merge of two roles, isn't it? You know, are we a photographer yeah. or are we a creative director and creating art out of it? That's, yeah, that's the a, question. It, it's a damn fine point that you know because I don't think people realise in in the re, in a real world test a real world job uh, you normally have a role mm. and that role is quite defined. Now all of us here are videographers, editors, directors. Jeez, you the think is, about what you do when you go out on mm. a weekend. You, you you're gonna go out on on a uh, to do a shoot. There's so much involved in it, and um, I know I've gone off piste here with the idea of the, the the composite and dishonesty. But at the same time, I think if you've gone out and done all that graft and work and direction, you're putting it all together yourself. I think you've earned yourself a little bit of uh, a chance to have creative license, haven't you? Mm. You know, you've you've gone out, you've scoped the place, you've researched, and then you're gonna create whatever you like from it. There's no boss telling each and every one of us here. You can't do that. We can do what the fuck we like. Mm. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, in other words, you, you're not agonising about your autumn effect anymore. Oh, You've no. talked yourself <laughs> into it. No. Defender, uh, are you looking for a bit of backing from us as well? Is that no, what it is, th there's something happened, though, with the shot, which I f absolutely adored. And anyone who's done this with um, uh, Silver Birch, you know when you get those little, just the tiny leaves, and they're like a light green, dark green, and they're, all, and they're just those little heart-shaped leaves, and they're only on a very fine, vine-like branch. And they'll skirt in between and in yeah. front, and and they just permeate with light if you get light. So what I did was I, I obviously faked the light because it was flat, and I've just used the art and effect with a mask to lift out those little dapples of 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 yellow and green and dark green, those little leaves coming out in between the silver birch. Have, and have that, you published it yet? No, no. Oh, because no. I was just going to write in and complain. Me too. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable dishonesty from Maris. Yeah. I wouldn't publish it now, mate, because you're going to get... <laughs> you <laughs> you, <laughs> you set yourself up for a fall now, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't care because I adore the image. <laughs> I, I've absolutely... Ad I, I'm so pleased with what I've got because we to drive 150 miles to Ennerdale and get there and then photograph Silver Birch... 
is a bit ridiculous, really. I, I just... Well, no, that'd be me. I'd be like that, though, mate. I'd do exactly the same. I'd, I'd gravitate to trees, I think. There's a lovely little <laughs> woodland as you walk down the... So the Ennerdale's on your right, and there's this little silver birch woodland on your left at the, mo- at the bottom of this crag in the mountains. And, and there's loads of huge... Are they called palm ferns? Yeah, good, good fun. To, good to fun. the south of the uh, lake, because I'm yet to venture. That's next on the list, isn't it, Dale? So uh, be, well, Ennerdale kind of points east, doesn't it? Yeah. Or am I going daft? So it's east. It's east. Yeah, so pointing east, um, just follow the path down as if you're going to walk up the valley to go to, say, um, haystacks or, or to get over and drop down. Oh, there's, right, a, okay. there's a lovely woodland Black down sale. here. You need, you need to be yes. careful, though. You need to be careful, Manny, because, um, you know, woodland is becoming a very saturated genre on YouTube <laughs> at the moment. No one's doing, <laughs> no, no one's doing landscape anymore. They're all doing woodland now. So it mm-hmm. should be... We should rename, like... every. You know, you used to have landscape photography on YouTube UK. It should be now woodland photography on YouTube UK. Oh, I've Absolutely. got wood. <laughs> You've got wood, yeah. Wow. <laughs> at last... Ancient photography, ancient tree photography on YouTube.uk. I'll be up for that. Yeah, assuming I've you got... can find the bloody trees. Yeah. <laughs> They're bloody what, elusive, what you know, Jim? You ever <laughs> find big it? trees. Nah, it was never there in the first place. That's the Woodland Trust. Yeah, that guy at the it's Woodland not... Trust just went, really? yeah, yeah, we'll just play. Yeah. I've, got, yeah, I've, na- just... I've nicked this picture off uh, off of Google. We'll put that one up. Yeah, that tree yeah, was actually in Western Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bloody composites. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> You should have known it was a yarra yarra tree. That was the problem. You yeah, should have, you should have realised. That's what I was saying. Rubber plant. Rubber plant. Had a koala sitting on the branch. Oh, that was, God. Yeah, that was the giveaway. So we was all we was all chatting earlier, you know, this week about like things that, that get us out and we carry on and why we do it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And sometimes you do get a bit bogged down, as I did at um, Thirlmere. And, and felt a little bit like lost, if you like. And sometimes you, you you're quite on your own in photography, guys. As you know, we all go out. We're on our own most of the time. Love it. And it is. It's great. I do love it. But it is nice, isn't it, when you get some feedback and people are inspired. Mm. It we're so lucky, really. The comments, but even this podcast, the comments we've had have been outstanding just ridiculously nice people saying really nice things and long may it continue because it really does keep us going out shooting and um i just i just wanted to mention it that i had a message i've had a couple of messages and i've read a few comments and i don't always get the time to comment to every single person i try my damnedest but it it doesn't go missed. It it really does have a, a positive effect on everything that we do. I'm sure you'll all agree. Hundred percent. Yeah. It can be it pushes it, me along. Yeah. It can be really easy to get lost in numbers, especially on YouTube, because YouTube always pushes you down that numbers route, you know, number of subscribers, number of views, view time, monetization and all of that. And we've all fallen in you know, I've fallen into that certainly. But at the end of the day, it's about, for me, and, and I'm sure for you guys, it's, it's, it's about people. It's about the, the, the interaction and the comments. And, you know, and, and sometimes I remember going to, um, going to a football match. Um, it sounds really weird, but my mate took me to a St. Albans football match. And there were about 700 people in the ground. And I looked around and thought, bloody hell, I get more views than this these people represent views and you know i get more views than these people sat in this football match a week some well usually not lately but usually and it just blows your mind it blows your mind that that many people would take their time even if it was 20 people 10 people 100 people take their time to to actually watch you wander around and and you know and take the time to watch it take the time to comment take the time to message you you know i've had some fantastic messages over lockdown from i've made new friends out of it. it's just oh, i think it's fantastic and that for me is it's what it's all about it's not about anything other than that and it's it's just brilliant mm. yeah for yeah. someone to say they were inspired by you for me yeah. it's ga- that's game over 
we, there's nothing else, is there? It's just I've 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 inspired someone mm. to do something by just doing what I love. Yeah, we we don't really appreciate also the circumstances that some people are in, and some people just can't get out of the house, and they just love to watch us out there doing our thing and sharing our pictures and, and our, our adventures, uh, you know, and it's and, <laughs> and it just gives them. You know some enjoyment really, and I've got I get a lot of comments on my vlogs of people who say like just really enjoy watching you out there and watching you enjoy yourself in the landscape, and it's just yeah, it's just great to know, and that, that's what as James said, that's what pushes us on to do more. You know, if you get comments such as that, the inspirational, you know, oh you've you've given me a great location to try, or you've given me an idea, that's fantastic. Just go out there. That's what we do it for. You know. I'm not doing it to, you know, raise my profile and raise my brand. I'm doing it to inspire yeah. others. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. It's a good point, uh, uh, Jamie, that it, we ain't doing it for a reason, really. We, we're going to go out and take pictures because we love photography. Mm. And like James said a couple of weeks ago, it's part, I'd feel a bit... If I didn't have my video camera and I wasn't vlogging it, it I'd find that a bit it's weird, lost. actually, now. Mm a bit something's missing and it's not because I'm doing it to say oh look everyone look at me it's more like look 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 at the place look you look know I can say. to share it yeah. isn't it yeah. Yeah. yeah sharing the experience mm. Mm. and I understand that I mean what what I do I choose to do choose the location that you go in the fells there's not a lot of vloggers who, who correct me if I'm wrong who do what I do? I go up in the fells, and that's. I like to share the the places where I go, so I fully understand that people are in less uh, a position that I am in, fortunate position I'm in, physically, and yeah, it's all about sharing different locations. A lot of locations where people can't get to. Mm. Yeah, really, and that's mm. what it's all about. But the comments absolutely inspires me. Um, Makes me make, makes me continue definitely, definitely, yeah. Mm. So thanks I, everyone. I get a fair bit of that as well, where people say, "Oh, you know that they enjoy it when I go to places that they can't reach." Um, but also, um, a lot of not just expats, but people that perhaps don't live around here anymore, who who enjoy seeing the places with which they're familiar, and it, you know they they get to enjoy them vicariously. Um, but one thing that I particularly enjoy is, um, it's going to sound terrible, cause, and I don't mean it to at all, but when somebody walks up to you and says, oh, yeah, hi, I know you are, I watch your channel, and you kind of think, blimey, you know, I'm nobody. Mm. Yeah. And somebody's come up and said hello. Honestly, it, I'm gonna, let me throw this out there. If anybody ever spots me out there standing there talking to myself, um, come up and say hello, because... I, I could talk photography all day long and mm. you know uh, because I, I tend to frequent some honeypot locations like um, Clandwin Island and the Church in the Sea I've had people come up and, and we've had a lovely chat and made some new friends you can't beat it I want to I want to say actually throw it out there that um, exactly what you're saying Dave um, I was at the photography show um, a couple of years ago and a couple came up to me Warren and Becca Jones Actually, uh, Becca's just had a baby. Uh, Ruby, well done. You know, congratulations on that. Um, and and she, you know, she messaged me and said like, y y you speaking to Warren, like made his show. And I was like, first of all, I was like, come on, seriously, wow. what the hell? That's that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You know, someone. I'm because I look at myself. I'm a nobody. I'm just you know, just go out and take a few photos and stick them on YouTube. But for someone to say that just and that made my that made my year essentially you know and it's like the, stuff like that is just you know because it's a real i think it's a real reciprocal thing it's really easy to to fall into this like oh gotta 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 produce gotta get out gotta gotta get views gotta get this gotta get that but the real things that really get you in here are when you know people say things like that to you or someone says you know your videos made my week i mean that's just a lot like, just just blows you away really it makes you realize that it's it's all you know so worthwhile hmm. you know yeah 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 100 percent agree you, yeah to to transform someone's way of thinking from just being you and someone then to get in touch and say how inspired they are is just 
for me, um, uh, it, I'm a softy. It, it it gets me. Um, it gets me. Like if it gets say. them out of the house to do what we do. Then so be it. We've done our job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, yeah. But but yeah. but we. It, it could so easily be worth were the viewer as well like myself you've all hold on hold on I've just had the delivery here comes pizza <laughs> oh my word <laughs> is that another beer that's going to be a long night we're, we're four down three, God, three. Four down. <laughs> I, I wasn't going hang on a sec Manny hang on gas on gas on, no. gas on. Well, talking about inspiration and inspiring people, I'm inspired by all you guys and have been since the beginning. David, James, Gary, Jamie. Me and Jamie are probably twins in that way, aren't we, mate? You know, I think me and you are probably quite closer together in the fact that these lot were doing it before us. Mm. So you you, you led that way. And and the other day I I got a message and someone said that I... I basically helped him to get out and I'd inspired him in so much of a, a, a way that it's took me a, a week for, for getting my head around it and just like Gary said it, it this isn't this isn't something we just try and make oh I was gonna say making merchandise and this that and the other at the end of it I've just got me join membership and it's not about that is it it's about giving something it's about giving something back it's about doing something it, I, I think I'm alright at what I do and if I'm influencing something I'm giving something back and I don't ask anything for it we all go out and take time and give of ourselves freely I think um, on the whole, I when, think on the whole thing about membership, Mally. I just want to say a couple of things because um, I was very critical of the F four guys, and and over the last couple of weeks, I've I've become, I've almost seen the light with it, and I'm way, I'm like, do you know what? Charge what you want for your stuff, guys, because you know it, it's it's perfectly acceptable, and you know it. As long as you're doing it for the right reasons, which clearly you are, Mally, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with you setting up memberships. You're offering, you're adding value onto your channel with those memberships. You're not just saying, you know, pay me X amount of money and and I'll give you a badge. You're giving something additional. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And, you know, I think when, when, when when I have the issue with this sort of thing is when you look at people... Who are, who are doing things but they're not really adding any value so they're trying to give you something or they're trying to sell you something but they're not I'm probably not really making much sense here but they're trying to sell you something that's probably not worthy crap. of what you're trying to sell yeah crap and it's like and and you know you 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 will continue to vlog Dave the same all of us we vlog because we love vlogging we go out and take photographs because we love going out and taking photographs and i don't think there'll be i don't think there'll come a point with you guys where you'll go out and you'll only be going out to to market you know and that's where that's where things fall down is where exactly. where the photograph becomes secondary yeah. and the making yeah. money yeah. becomes the primary yeah. focus yeah. that's yeah. where it falls down you, 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 you're using the platform for something else yeah. selling yeah. yourself out you it. become a brand yeah. rather than a photographer mm. Has but anyone noticed I my think we Lakeland covered that. Grinch flat cap, by the way? <laughs> but we kind of... retail at fifteen ninety nine. We, we talked nice. about that last very week nice. to a certain extent because you we, know, we were saying that there are people out there who, who set up their YouTube channel and the first thing they have in mind is how to get the numbers up so that they can market whatever the rubbish is that they're marketing. Actually, there is one thing I wanted to say <laughs> that just occurred to me... Um, apropos of what you just were talking about Gary I heard I'm saying nothing no names no pack drill I'd heard that some of the F4 content was being pirated and I can't think of anything worse that is absolutely disgraceful if it's true I don't know I'm not saying where I heard it and I won't be pressed on it but if somebody is touting that content around you should be absolutely ashamed of yourself because those boys have put so much effort into it here, here. that it's bang out of order. Pirated. Yeah. And, and here, you know, here. how do you sleep at night? That's all I'm going to say. 
to, to you know those guys they've gone out there and I am you know I don't know what what the quality of their work is but I could imagine it's top notch I mean, oh and, I bet and, it's brilliant and, and, and if they if they're if they're charging here's here's the thing for everyone out there if F4 are charging you three hundred dollars for something your choice is I'll pay that or I won't have it it isn't I'll nick it that's not yeah. the, there isn't an option there yeah. there isn't a mm. I'll steal it off of them option it's I'll pay the money for it or I won't pay the money for it and it, and and to hear to hear that Dave that people are doing that is it's just it's just appalling. I know it. I, w- I was astounded I'm not I'm not going to go into where I heard it because that would be wrong but I tell you what it's a reliable source and frankly they should be absolutely ashamed of themselves that they, they should crawl under the rock yeah, yeah. never come in mm. yeah I totally agree. To go out and put so much effort into something. I'll, I'll go back to what I was saying. Uh, young gentleman getting in touch and saying how inspired he was. Could you imagine um, you've created content, you've put the effort in, and you've done all this work, and then someone just takes those comments away from you? That's heartbreaking, that. that yeah. That's That's disgraceful. And, and at the end of the day, each and all of us that go out there, we, we don't get paid huge amounts of money, which some deluded idiot, idiots might think YouTube provides as a platform where we can earn money. I work full time. We all work full time. and We all do what we do. We look after our families. We go out. You know, Gary's been shielding for quite some time. It's been a hard road lately. It's been tough. And then to screw people over dishonestly for a book mm. is, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. Mind you, if I could swipe is. some Grinch merch without him noticing, I would. Well, <laughs> I'd buy one of those caps, James, just saying. Yeah? Yeah. Fifteen ninety nine. Oh, uh, not that much. I mean, maybe. where do I send what? my postal order? <laughs> number two, the Grinch house. <laughs> Grinchville. Top of the Oh, not number 12, Wasswater Close. <laughs> no, 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 that's the second. That's my Can holiday you home. Which putting I'm my not. address on here. <laughs> so, to go full circle about the dishonesty this week, um, I, I don't really use a watermark because I think if you're going to produce something and put it online, you, it's going to get taken, stolen, used, abused. And that's just the reality of the world we live in. But. It shouldn't be like that, should it, gentlemen? It shouldn't be like that. But I don't particularly like watermarks or watermarking my images. I normally upload them onto socials at around 2,500 pixels. So if you're going to print that shit, well, good luck. The thing is, you can easily remove watermarks, can't you? At the end of the day, watermarks, yeah. are just, they're just distracting. Just It's just like it is. burning your highlights out. Yeah. We need to do that. <laughs> What are you trying to say? Yeah. What watermarks? Uh, <laughs> watermarks for me say two things, right? They say, they, well, two things about watermarks. One is like you said, they're really easily, uh, you know, content aware filled. And two is you saying I'm a pretentious twat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I, I, I tell you what, it's I tell you I, what as you, well. Sorry, sorry, to interrupt, Jamie. A lot of people uh, put their name and signature to. Crap! Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's 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 tricky. I, you know, I, I run a uh, I don't run at all. I help uh, run a, a learning group for amateur photographers, and I, and so many people on there put a watermark on the bottom, and and I don't pull them up with it because you know they are learning and they they want to get their images out and they want some critique on it. But it, it is so distracting, and it, it I always question myself to say why have you put a watermark you know one you're you're an amateur photographer so you're learning okay that's great but why put a watermark on because to be honest nobody is going to steal your image you know it really isn't that good enough to steal but so why do people do it It, it, maybe it is because they think that's the done thing because if you don't put it on there somebody's going to nick it Mm -hmm. you know maybe there's an education piece there that people need to be educated to think that it isn't the case. People can easily just get rid of that watermark if they want yeah. to. You could probably earn a bit more money in compensation if you sue that person who's still in the first place as well. I, I would mm. probably say the pretentious twat was a bit of an overstatement, so <laughs> I apologise to anyone viewing or listening who puts watermarks on. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying they agree with you, Gary, but there's something about these f- signatures where they're like, 
My name's some Barnaby. Barnaby. F- Barnaby Doc Bear. the Third. You know, blah, 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 blah. and you see these woo, intricate. I think, oh, that that's that's nicer than the picture. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> Manny, can I just say that's 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 about fifteen minutes of extra editing to get rid of those. Yeah, yeah, I did think that. So when thanks you for that. It, yeah. I really appreciate it. But, uh, uh, what, what, what's worse, though, right? Uh, okay, so do you reckon there's a scale of of pretentious twattiness on where you put the watermark? So if you put it in the bottom corner, it's not so bad. But if you put it right across the main subject, it's sort of like a big look at me. That that's that's top level. What do you reckon? Well, you clearly haven't got an idea because <laughs> no, you're just I hiding the image. <laughs> yeah, I use eye stock, and I was just going to say, if you're going to watermark an image to stop people stealing it, you'd put proof, 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 proof in about fifteen percent transparency all over the image. Mm. So then there's no image, is there? Because mm. you're just going to see. It. So commercially, you know what the image, you think, yeah, that, that su- suits the subject. You buy the image mm. and then you've not got the watermark on it. But in landscape photography terms or photography terms, if you're going to put that watermark all over it and post it on Facebook, I might actually do it tonight for a loss. <laughs> <laughs> with penises or something you know well that is your signature isn't it? is that your wall though? well yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, is that, or is that a comment is that a comment on the shop you can't tell yeah. if it's a watermark or Mally's comment dig on shop. the shop Mally's dig no, shop yeah. Yeah. sorry ladies and gentlemen I'm, I'm being crude once again well it, uh, the elephant in the room round here is that I'm a pretentious twat <laughs> Oh, no. oh shit! <laughs> Adventure to share. <laughs> Dave, you don't, you don't, you don't think you do, you? Well, you see, <laughs> they're obviously quite subtle because you haven't noticed. You pretentious twat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Do I you on all your God. images? I, I don't notice that. Exactly. I've had my images stolen for commercial purposes, uh, and. Whilst it's perfectly feasible for somebody with half a brain cell to remove the said watermark, the sort of people that steal stuff from a Google search are too stupid to do it, and it's coming quite handy. I'll leave Have you it made there. a bit? Have you made a bit from it? Because mm. you can sue, can't you? Mm. You can, you can threaten to sue and make them scuttle all the way to the cash point. Of, of course, you know, mitigating circumstances if you've had your work stolen in the past. Then you're clearly not a pretentious. If there's a valid reason to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're backtracking quickly here, Gary. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just get yourself out of that hole. It's like rule number one. Rule number one. Make sure make sure none of your fellow pubcasters are doing something that you're about to slag off before you slag it off. Oh, that was that was worth waiting 15 weeks for. <laughs> what is that on your face, Gary? Oh, egg. Uh, no, actually, though, well. uh, can, what I would just like to say on the interest of keeping friendships going is actually I mostly agree with what you're saying because an awful lot of the signatures you do see are clumpy, nasty, um, brush script fonts that people have knocked up for themselves um, mm. and use them at full opacity, sort of pretty, you know, bottom third, uh, and it's pretty clumpy and horrible. Those were exactly uh, the ones the I was fact- on about. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. There's no need for it. And and I think that when you get to the point where you've got a certain element of subtlety in it, you're probably at the point where your imagery is more likely to be stolen. Yeah. I've, just, so, I've, you know. I've just gone on uh, and looked at one of your images because I didn't believe you did do it, but you are right. It's right in the bottom right-hand corner, yeah, isn't thank it? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, 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 I never noticed it. Yeah. It's whacked. <laughs> I, I might change my signature just as a D-twat. a limited edition <laughs> twat 2020 squirming <laughs> oh, in my seat sign it guy <laughs> brilliant oh, Darren, right. Darren I'll just leave it there don't then. Post, Darren Darren before you come back check your signatures mate. <laughs> imagine, he, imagine Darren does it as well oh god yeah. he does yeah Oh, don't tell me he does. Yeah, walk along in dog yeah. shit. Yeah. It, it will never come back, you know. That's the last we'll see a Darren on the podcast. No, it'll, be, it'll be next week. We've got someone missing. Gary's here, not here. He's uh, yeah, he's he's a uh, he's uh, six foot under. Yeah. 
<laughs> David's Actually, not I, I was close to being missing this week because the weather looks quite nice and I yeah. almost packed my tent and headed off for the hills. But uh, There's some lovely clouds at the minute. I had a quick look when I went for that, Waz. Oh. Yeah, I'm going for the uh, sunrise shoot, uh, but I doubt if I'll make it onto the ridge in time for sunrise itself, but I should should still have some quite nice light at that point. I think there's going to be some a. fog tomorrow because we had a bit of rain today. The temperature is about 18, 19, but a wild, mild, mild wind. So Yes, mm, virtually hoping. zero wind tomorrow, and you never know. There's the possibility of a cheeky little inversion mm. up the Ogwin. <sighs> that would be a nice... Start back mm. for you, wouldn't it? Wow. It yeah. would actually, yeah. Oh, is, that, is that your first day yeah. out, Dave? Is it is, first? yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, lovely. I've, I've got about 10 miles planned. Nice little circuit. And actually, there's two peaks that I'm hitting that are very specific, which I'll, I'll share in the vlog. But uh, for anybody who doesn't watch the vlog, the, the first one is that it's the one peak is the nearest one to the island. It's the one I've been looking at for four months. <laughs> And, and so it's not the most epic peak, but it's the one I've been looking at. So I'm going to be stood on the top of it. Right Good little story there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And then the other one is uh, Agan, which is the last peak I was on, on New Year's Eve, when there was visibility of about 50 feet. Uh, and uh, I just did an intro to my review of 2019. But... I sat on that peak on December the 31st thinking, oh, I can't wait for about March time when I'll be. <laughs> mm, so I'm going to yeah. hit that one as well and go, right, you bugger, I've got you now and it's clear and I can see some stuff to point my camera at. D double benefit of cloud inversion. Firstly, fantastic photographs. Secondly, locals can't find your car. <laughs> <laughs> win win. Win win. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> I was toying with the idea of getting a taxi who's <laughs> getting to drop me off I've seen a few people this week uh, in and around yourself David uh, who've been travelling and it, it seems have, it's been uh, very much em embraced so far there's been no reports I've not seen anything I've seen a couple of people been out and shot a couple of ridges and shot some local landmarks as well in around Carnarvon and going up mm -hmm. to Anglesey and it, it looks very positive I believe they may be opening Wales up next week mm. for us rabble to come back <coughs> with our pitchforks ourselves and our you know you can't have a beer until the 5th of August though it, well no. you can sit outside from uh, next week I think or the mm. week after something along those lines but it, it as far as I'm concerned the more people that come the better because our economy is dying on its knees at the moment and mm. if if you're somebody who says right okay well I'm not going to jump on squeezy jet or Ryanair and you know fly off to the med uh, you're looking at hopefully a UK holiday and so the West Country and Cumbria and places like that are getting heavily booked up mm. Mm. and Wales is a month behind everybody else because the Muppets in Cardiff don't care Mm. makes no right. sense and and, and yeah. their claim that ah oh, yes but we're being more careful so we'll come out of the virus situation uh, with a more gentle curve no Bankrupt. the minute you open the gates everybody comes in and and we're all on a level playing field yeah. i'm sorry but catch up. I, i'm not a scientist but i did a bit of science back in the day i got on, some qualifications it? and what you're saying in Cardiff makes no sense at all. And that might be slightly political, but leave it in if you like, Gary. I don't care. <laughs> no, it's common sense, Dave. I'm leaving it in. I've embarrassed myself, so... You know. <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Just say something really stupid to balance everything out. We'll be fine. I'll um, leave that to uh, Mally. Yeah, I was, I was just going to interject with something to do with hazelnuts popped up my nostril, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't know why. It's, it's the only way to eat hazelnuts. I'll get squirrels to pull them out, chomp on them and shove them back up. Good way. What has a hazelnut in every bite? <laughs> Squirrel shit. Squirrel shit. Not top it. Talking, of, right, talking yeah. of food, what's the weirdest thing you've put on toast? Ooh. Ooh. What's the weirdest food you would eat on toast? Or uh, in a sandwich? Sharon Sharon, uh, Sharon? Um, Sharon Sharon Mar <laughs> Sharon Bartholomew from what? year three on toast what? you put her on toast <laughs> what 
In between two slices of toast. <laughs> they were big bread. Yeah. Ooh. Shall you got no, no weird eating habits. Somebody must put some weird stuff on toast. <laughs> Be- beans? <It's> like, no. <laughs> Alright, I'll go. I'll, really I'll go then. I'll go. Just me. It wasn't Sharon, was it? It wasn't Sharon. I don't know her. I, oh, that's good. <laughs> you clearly want to share, Jamie. There's yeah, something. Yeah, no, no, no. Share, I, so, I, I, I was trying to lead on from our conversation last week about, or was it the week before, about bacon butties that seemed to get quite a lot of interest in the comments. Oh yeah. yeah. So I just thought we could, uh, you know, carry yeah, on with food. But you, you, I, you basically, it, you basically view haul. This is just this is just absolutely. a clip, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a clip bait right now, isn't it? Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that. So, at all. so what what is it then? What, what, what well, no, I, I I over here in the fens. Okay, there's you guys. If you eat in a posh fish fish restaurant, you'll have Shame. you'll have maybe had samphire or samphire or whatever you call it. Yeah, it's like a seaweed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So over in the fens on the washland, it's a cultivated plant that's sold, and what we do here with it, we pickle it in vinegar. Okay, so we have yeah. some samphire that's pickled in vinegar, and it's gorgeous. And I've had that as a kid on toast with jam, cheese bread, oh, and what, uh, what? beetroot. So not all together. Yeah, all together. So jam, jam cheese, jam, bread. cheese bread, and Are you pregnant, and, Jamie, and pickled seaweed, <laughs> samphire, <laughs> and, and beetroot. <laughs> Sam and beetroot. Is yeah, quite sometimes spicy. I don't because beetroot's pickled in vinegar as well, so they clash. So the thing is, though, that, that doesn't work the in the rest of the country because you need six fingers to get into the jar yeah, of samphire. Yeah. To well, we are a bit strange <laughs> over here, but you know. flipper, a flipper, <laughs> pickled seaweed, and my my kids, you know, because every year my mum brings me some what of this samphire that's pickled in the jars, and it's around this time of year because it's my birthday in a couple of weeks. So it's around this time of year, and I normally get three or four jars of pickled seaweed for my birthday. <laughs> Not really. Happy look forward birthday, to it. Jamie! Fantastic. Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, that's an easy it's, win, isn't it? Is that <laughs> with, what to is send that you know? Yeah. Huh? Is that with chilli? It's quite peppery, isn't it? No, 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 no. No. I've never heard it, of Well, it might be I'm for getting, you to I'm getting mixed up. I'm no, getting no. mixed up. But with jam. <laughs> jam and yeah, cream cheese. and cheese spread. Che- no, oh, cheese yeah. spread. Oh, Jam and cheese spread. You can, you can just yeah, pitch like to the sweet, swing, sweet can't you? sweet and sour thing, you know. You're just back from honeymoon, and, and you say to your sister, what's for breakfast? And she says... <laughs> Who's also your auntie? Philadelphia <laughs> yeah. and Sunfire with some strawberry jam. Well, there you go. It's my weird background share to all. I, like, I quite like the idea. Yeah, but you've trumped everybody before you started. <laughs> well, nobody I gave you the opportunity, but nobody was forthcoming with anything. I can't really think <laughs> We're not as mad as you. <laughs> what was wrong with Sharon? Sharon on toast was always was always good round these parts. Well, I, I didn't know Sharon so whether she was good or bad. I couldn't comment. It's a bit like Sandfire. The True. saddest yeah. thing is, is I, I'm now trying to think of something to beat that, and I can't. I'm like thinking, um, I don't know, strawberry and... We must do something weird with peanut butter. I don't like peanut butter, but people do something weird with peanut butter and jam and stuff. <laughs> peanut butter and jam and stuff is a similar thing, isn't it, than Sandfire yeah, and yeah. jam? Yeah. I, li- I like brown sauce and mayonnaise together. Yeah, yeah, I can, okay. I can get that. I can kind of get that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't get that. Well, brown sauce and brown mayonnaise. Sauce yeah. and mayonnaise. Yeah. Mix it round. It, well, yeah. if you mix tomato sauce and mayonnaise, it's kind of Thousand Island dressing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. brown yeah. sauce would be yeah. like, like what, two and a half island dressing or something. Or Northern Ireland dressing. I don't know. Brown. Like Not Northern Ireland dressing. in Christ. A know. mud dressing. <laughs> <laughs> mud, mud dressing. Yeah. Brown and ears. Yeah. Brown and A's. There's a there's a new product right there. Good market, that comes up. Huh. That's a disease, isn't it? Well, Welsh cakes, Dave. Dave, what about Welsh you cakes? Are. What have you done with Welsh cakes? Have you anything topped on a Welsh cake that you've uh, you want to share? No, I just eat them as they are, mate. Yeah. Don't. I do like my Welsh mum, cakes. My mum picks the currants out of them. Yeah. The obvious question is, why do you cook them with bloody currants in to start <laughs> with? <laughs> At, at Christmas, she used to get a mince pie, lift the bloody top off, scoop out the mince, hoy it off, just eat good pastry. <laughs> just make some pastry. Spot on, Mrs. G. Spot on that. <laughs> That's spot on. I used to get me grandma for make scones without uh, raisins. <sighs> yeah, but, What's yeah, the but, point? Yeah, but that's, what Dave's saying is make the scones with the raisins and then pull the raisins out. 
Yeah, yeah. but if he, if he was there early enough when she was making him, you'd be like, take him out, take him out, and beat your nan up, you know. No, no I didn't. Yeah. No, I didn't. No. Where's this, she made where's this conversation gone? gone? Has anyone tried fried Mars bars? No. Yeah, deep fried in Scotland there, though, don't they? Yeah. Glasgow. Do you know what you don't, you don't get down south? Right? You know what you don't get down south at all? Where I used to live in Peterborough, and I bet all you guys, I don't know about you, Jamie, scraps, right? Scraps. Yeah, yeah, yeah scraps yeah, and fish yeah. and yeah, chips. Chips and scraps. Yeah. Chips and scraps, yeah. yeah. Bits. I go, you Not go into a chip shop, scraps, you know, bits, you know. Oh. Yeah, yeah you, you go into a chip shop around here, you can't get them. You cannot get scraps anywhere. You say chips and scraps, they look at you like you're an idiot. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you know yeah. what smacks are? Then? That's a lot of scraps on the street, aren't they? Where you're from, Gary? Smacks. What are smacks then? Specials. Smacks. Potato in batter. Oh, scallops. Cut, fritters. Fritters. Scallops. Scallops. Fritters. Oh, scallops. Wow. Yeah. Fritters. Yeah. You don't get. Smacks you don't get those down here either. You don't get scallops down here either. In Peterborough, That's just up the road, you do. Down this way, no. No scraps. No scallops. Peterborough's a little bit more like that, though, isn't it, Peterborough? Not really? Steady on, steady on boys. <laughs> not, no, not, no, we're not really, no. We're not. You, There's another 50 subs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go, Lee. Well, there'll be my subs that you've lost, Mally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Peterborough's sort of... Peterborough's always weird. When I used to go on a holiday, if I went anywhere up north, they'd say you're a Cockney. And if I went anywhere down south, they'd say you're a northerner. We don't have the East Anglian twang in, in Peterborough. Well, I don't notice we did anyway. I thought, because a lot of Peterborough was originally London. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Mally? A lot of yeah. Peterborough was originally London Overspeed. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's very, quite Cockney, but not nowhere near as Cockney as, as down south. So if no. you went anywhere to but, like South End, they'd be like, you, they think you're from Yorkshire. Do you know when you're at secondary school, though, and someone starts who's new and you're like, oh, who's this? And we had a lad, I don't think he watches this, is this but he the, might Is this do. the one you had on toast? No, no. <laughs> not Sharon, no. Sharon. Your sister. <laughs> yeah, well, Sh- Sharon, no, Sharon was in order, of course. Um, this lad, kid, you know, you're the all oh, excited new starter, third year at high school. Oh, and he comes in and he's from Peterborough. And you're like, oh, what? What was his he's name? What was his name? Yeah, I won't know Sat- Huh? Can I can I say it? Yeah. Can, well, we might have to cut his name out. Cy Davis. No, Simon Davis. Same age. Cy, Cy. Yeah, Cy. Yeah, Simon. But he called himself Cy. Well, it wasn't spelt Simon though. It was spelt Cy. No, his real name was Simon. He said, "When I'm moving up north, I'm going to change it to Cy." <laughs> Confuse all the locals. <laughs> Cy, if you're watching this, yeah. do you I, know I Gary? Know yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, big, tall, short guy, blonde, brown hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brownie blue eyes. Yeah, spoke with a northern accent, although yeah. he's from Peterborough. But you know, when you're at high school and someone starts new and they've got a funny accent, yeah. and he was from Peterborough, and I was always amazed by how, like, kind of, he, I didn't Odd expect his accent to sound like that. Do, do you know what I mean? I expected him to be more southern. Yeah, thinking oh Peterborough, but he wasn't. He wasn't that much different to me as a yicker. No. It was quite good twang, it's you not, know. It's not broad. It's not broad, it's not no, broad at all. I, I will yeah. say, though, I've had bath and path talked out of me since I've moved down here. I now say bath mm. and path. And, and oh. dinner, dinner was always dinner was always at 12. Lunch. And now that's oh. lunch and dinner's in the mm. evening. Yeah, what about yeah, scone, and s- scone and scone? I always say scone. I, I'll never Garage say or scone. garage? A garage. Yeah, mm. but Bath and Path are gone now. It's Bath mm. and Path. What they do say around here a lot mm. is me duck. They me like duck, calling yeah. people me duck. Yeah. Duck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a local thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a local thing. But you're you where are you deep in Whiz Beach Way? Deep in. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm so on the link link the, the Lincolnshire Norfolk Cambridgeshire border, right on the cusp. But my my fam my family are from Norfolk. That way, so I've got a bit of the old broad Norfolk in me, boy. Yeah. Hey, you know? late, boy. <laughs> hey, go late, boy. Hey, go boy. Get off my land, boy. Yeah. Norfolk. Hey. Oh, it's a lovely accent, that. I love the old Norfolk accent. Yeah, takes you back to me roots, boy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this week and listening. And wherever you may be, may you be well, safe, and be kind to each other. And without further ado, what can I say? But see there. Bye-bye. See you later. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>